Hi, I'm Chris from pro -Am Racing, and in this segment we're going to talk about some proper wiring techniques. See, these are typical crimp-on connectors that I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, these are really the types of things that you're going to want to avoid. Uh, the problem with them is they tend to corrode, work their way loose, and when you crimp them onto the wire, they really don't make a very good connection between the terminal and the wire, and they can create high resistance. If you're working with circuits that are relatively low voltage, the resistance created by these uh, types of terminals can actually skew the readings from sensors and actually affect the way the car runs. So you really want to avoid these things. So if you want to join two wires together permanently, uh, again, this is what you'd be familiar with, uh, don't do it. The proper way to do this is to solder the wires together. And before you make your connection, you want to make sure you install your heat shrink tubing. And then strip back the insulation on one and then the other. And then you want to twist these wires together. Twist them just like that. And then take your soldering gun, get it warming up. If you touch the tip of the solder to the gun, it'll help to transfer the heat to the wire. Put enough solder on there to coat it, let it cool off a bit, and then you want to inspect your joint and make sure that there aren't any sharp points. Sometimes when you pull the soldering gun away from the joint, you'll create a uh, sharp point out of the solder, which will work its way through the uh, heat shrink. So just inspect it, make sure it's good. Slide your heat shrink over the joint. Now you want to make sure that you use enough heat shrink to go well beyond the solder joint. When you solder the wire, the solder will travel up inside the insulation a bit and it will stiffen the wire up inside. You can actually see that the wire won't bend past this point. The heat shrink serves two purposes. One, you're looking to insulate the joint, but the other thing you want to do is make sure that the wire flexes out beyond the solder joint. If, if the wire flexes at the rigid solder joint, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to fatigue and it's going to break. We, we want to have enough heat shrink that we go well past the solder. Okay, we should have a nice solid joint that now flexes out well beyond the solder joint, that should last forever. If you wanted to install a ring terminal, rather than just crimping it on, uh, what we want to do is crimp it and then solder it. Now, ring terminals are certainly available without this insulator on the end, but the ones that you're going to find at the parts store will typically have this insulator on there, and obviously we need to remove that if we're going to solder it on. So just pull it off with a pair of pliers. Kind of the same as last time, put your heat shrink on first. Strip a little insulation off. Slide this in place. Crimp it. And then we're going to solder it on. Same deal, get your gun warmed up, put it up underneath the terminal, get your solder down right where the gun meets the terminal. That helps to transfer the heat up to the terminal so you can get the solder in there. And then you want to put enough on, you can actually see the solder travel up inside the joint. When the joint's all covered, you're done. <clears throat> Let it cool. Slide your heat shrink on. That's your insulator now. You shrink it. And there you go. That will never corrode. If we need to make a connection that we can take apart, I like to use these GM weather pack connectors. They're available in two gang, one gang, three gang. This is a one. We're gonna do this one. Slide your insulator onto the wire first. Strip a little insulation off. 
put your weather insulator back up, take your terminal, put it in place. I like to bend these fingers in by hand just to sort of hold this together while I'm getting my tool in place. <clears throat> this is a crimping tool for the weather pack connectors. Now they're fairly expensive, certainly more expensive than one of these in the butt connectors, but uh, it's worth it. It's worth it to spend the extra money on the proper equipment because if you don't, your joint's going to fail later and you will be sorry when you're broken down on the side of the road because your wiring came apart. Put it together, give it a squeeze, that's assembled, push it up in place, snap this down, that's a little safety to keep it from coming apart, there you go, there is a professional OEM quality connector. Here's the other half I assembled earlier. You'll see there's another little weather pack right inside here and another, another weather seal in the back of this one. You plug these two halves together and that is a good OEM or even marine quality connection. And that's the way to go. And that does it for this segment. Be sure to check out our website at proamracing.com for more helpful videos. Until next time, I'm Chris Richards for Proam Racing.